Hi, as promised, I'm back. I had a little break and now we're going to jump straight into that class and uh, let's do it. So we're going to start, we're going to start with the pelvic tilt. So you're going to grab your ball, pop it between your knees. And we're going to do pelvic tilts. We're going to do six of them and we're going to do them with our arms, which is going to give us a fabulous stretch through the back of our thoracic spine. So we're going to take a deep breath in. Is there anyone who shouldn't do this now? Uh, anyone that shouldn't do this, I would suggest anyone again that's just herniated their lower back to avoid this, um, that has a herniated disc. Um, I have hernias in my back, um, but I'm going to push through it and do it anyway because I'm sort of a few years on from having my hernias. But if you're in that critical condition when you're in a lot of pain, do not do this. I'm going to do a back class. Um, a special back class for people with back issues soon so you guys might want to uh, wait for wait for that class all right so we're going to take a deep breath in and then I'm going to breathe out I'm going to slowly roll off thinking rolling up vertebra by vertebra I'm contracting my hamstring butt connection points at the back of my leg I'm going to breathe in I'm going to take my arms over my head I'm going to turn the tops of my hands to each other and I'm going to slowly roll down through my back, reaching through the crown of my head, turning, reaching through my fingertips as I slowly roll down. I breathe in, I bring my arms back over my head. I breathe out, I begin to slowly roll off vertebra by vertebra. I breathe in, take my hands over my head, reach through the tops of my hands, reach through the crown of my head, draw my chin towards my chest. And breath in. And out. And in. Reaching through the crown of my head, reaching through my corona. That wasn't very funny, it. <laughs> you better explain to the people what so you So corona explain. and crown mean the same thing. Um, corona is crown in Spanish, and I just thought it was kind of funny. Maybe not. <laughs> Breath in, I've got two more to go. Breath in. You can play around with your arms, you can turn them this way or you can turn them that way, whatever feels better. I always feel much more stretched when I turn the tops of my hands to each other. Also, if you've got someone at home who can just give you a nice little gentle touch. I was going to say, if you can get someone, which I do with my clients at work, as a pull on your hand as you're going down, they can do that extra stretch, which you get all like, ugh, this feels very good. Last one. And in. And out. Dropping your legs down to a straight leg position. We're going to go on two six roll ups. Arms are going to go over the back of your head. You're going to take a deep breath in. You're going to look towards your thighs and towards your navel. And breath out, slowly rolling up. Reach forward, breath in. Breath out, slowly rolling down. I'm giving my inner thighs a gentle, gentle squeeze. Rolling down vertebra by vertebra. I'm doing a little pelvic tilt here at this point. Arms go all the way back over my head. Breathing in, lift, hold. Breath out, lifting. Reaching forward, breath in. Breath out, I'm getting a lovely hamstring stretch as I'm rolling down. And then we're going to stop. We're just going to challenge ourselves. I'm going to stay here for three breaths. In, out. In, out. In, out, rolling all the way down. Breath in, lift. Out, roll up. Reach forward, breath in. Out, slowly rolling down. Vertebra by vertebra. How many have I done, Mandy? Three. Yes. Breath in. Out. Don't forget to contract your pelvic floors. In, reach. 
out, slowly rolling down. Two more, in, out, reaching forward, enjoying the stretch, breathing in, breathing out as you slowly roll down, hold, two, three, all the way over, last one, in, out, Reach forward, out slowly, rolling down and resting. Slide back onto your mat. Okay, those of you that struggle with the roll up, you can place heavy weights over your legs or you can stick your legs underneath the chair or, some, or underneath the couch or something that, uh, like that that will give you a little bit of um, extra support. Okay, so now we're going to do a toe tap combo. Um, we're going to do 10 toe taps on one side, 10 toe taps on the other side, 10 alternating toe taps, and then we're going to do 10, uh, sorry, six little uh, double legged toe taps in which I'm not going to touch the floor. I want all of you in a flat back, please. Obviously, this is optional, you can work in neutral spine, um, but I, I'm going to work with a flat back for my back, my back feels better like that. And you've got to make these decisions when you're doing these home programs, you've got to kind of be um, responsible for what feels good and what doesn't feel good, okay? Legs are up on tabletop. It's going to start to hurt, okay? It's going to start to hurt in the hip flexors because we're doing the repetition of 10 on each side, okay? All right, so we're going to start and all one. Three. Four. So it's important to keep Five, the leg in an angle now. Six, <laughs> seven, nah. eight, yeah. Keep your leg. Nine. Now go out. Ten. That's better. What am I doing wrong? It's okay. You're just you're just bending your your knee. So keep that wow. better. So everyone, it's really important not to bend the Two. knee. The the leg stays as if it's in a cast. Three. That's better. So reach it out. Four. Five. Beautiful. Six. Drop your other leg a little bit. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ah, I see. Not to do this. Exactly. Ah. Because everyone loves to do that. And I think yeah. Don't do this. It has to be a reach. Tap. Yeah. And then be careful that you don't boom boom with the I back. I can just see that you're compensating a little bit because of your back. So. Okay. So now we're going to do the combination. Three. Three, five, five. Every time I'm going down, I'm working my abs, I'm working my pelvic floor, trying to while talking. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we're going to bring the legs closer together and we're going to do six little ones with both legs. Three, four, five, six. Good, and rest. So if you can feel all this, that's normal. And if you can feel your psoas, that's normal also. Okay. Um, if you feel your lower back, please make sure again that you're not overarching. Make sure that you're um, contracting your pelvic floor. Pretty much, unless you've got, uh, in, those of you that have injuries in your back have different sorts of aches and pains. But if you don't have an injury in your back and you do start to feel your back, it's because you're not contracting properly and you're not um, and that you're, you're, you're continuously moving the, the lower back into an arch and into a flat and into an arch and into a flat. You must find a position and hold that position. 
Okay, so now we're going to do single legged extensions, a little combo with a single leg. So we're going to go, legs will be up on tabletop. We'll do five extensions on each leg. We'll then lift our head and shoulders and do another five extensions on each leg. We'll then take our hands behind our back and do another five extensions on each leg without resting. Okay. Whew. Legs up. Again, lower back flat, press into the ground, take a breath in, breath out, extend. Three, sinking those bellies down. Four, five, get that pelvic floor working. Okay, we're staying up there, we're doing another five. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Hands can have the head continue. One. Two, three. We should have done the spider challenge first, Matt. Four, five, and rest. Yeah, that's right. At the end of this class, I've got to do the spider challenge, which I'm doing a challenge of adding two spiders. Uh, doing basically in twelve days, I'm going to be doing thirty-two spiders, which I've never been able to do in my life. <laughs> so, um, you can watch me progress into being able to do that. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do um, a double legged exercise. So both legs are going to be up, your toes are going to be pointing towards each other, your hands are going to go on your knees. You're going to breathe in and you're going to lift. You're going to breathe out, you're going to make a circle with your arms. You're going to breathe in, you're going to reach towards your hands. You're going to breathe out and you're going to drop right down. If you have a tendonitis in your shoulder, I suggest that you don't do this because this arm circle will probably irritate you. So just be careful. If you want to do the exercise, just work out a different combination with your arms. Breath in. Breath out. As I do a little reach, my six pack's going to pop up. It's only a little bit. And as I drop back down, I really want you to suck that six pack back down. Four more, in and out, in, three more, in, you can add a little flex, out, just to make it more complicated, in and out, in, If you have a neck injury, I would suggest that you use one of your hands to hold on to your and support your neck as you go round. Yeah, exactly. Just to give that extra support, otherwise you'll end up like I feel today after doing the spiders yesterday. <sighs> and resting. Good, okay. So. I, um, I'm going to add a little psoas stretch in here because we've just worked our psoas. So we're just going to come like this. We're just going to tuck under, lean forward, and then with this psoas stretch today, I'm going to get you to lift your arm up towards the ceiling. And we're going to lean a little bit further into it, drop down. And that feels really good to stretch the psoas out. If you didn't just watch my introductory class, um, again, just making reference back to the psoas being a muscle that holds a lot of fear. Everyone's in a state of fear. The whole, basically the whole world is in a state of fear at the moment. So um, I really think it's important that we stretch the psoas three or four times a week. But I will be inserting it into all of my work, uh, all of my, my classes. Again, we tuck under, we lift the arm, we feel the stretch. 
coming into the stretch, holding. And I'll stay there for a little bit. Enjoying the feeling of stretching the psoas after working out. Nice. Okay. So we're going to lose the pillow to start with. Down there. Pop that over there. I've got to be aware that Matthew always has styling. I've always got to be concerned about how everything looks because my wife is pedantic about style. So we're now going to do your double legged side lifts. So what you want to think when you're, how is my angle, Mandy? Good, would you normally put a pillow under your head or? No, because we're going to do little lifts. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so basically when I'm teaching this. Alignment's good. I want you to think that you can see your feet in your peripheral vision, okay? So that means that you're not overarching. This hand is my stabilizer. I'm going to use my serratus anterior, which is a muscle in here. I'll talk more about the serratus anteriors later on in my in my other classes and in my rehabilitation advice section. Um, I want you to contract that muscle through here as well as contracting the abs. So we're going to take a breath in. I'm going to breathe out. I'm going to activate. I'm going to little, little, do a little lift. I'm reaching out through the crown of my head and I'm thinking that I'm like more of the shape of a tree than the shape of a banana. Breath in, drop down. Breath out and lift. Reaching through my crown, my corona. That's going to be the joke of the month, isn't it, Natalia? Yeah. In. I want to see how many times I can say Corona in a month. There are lots of little variations to this exercise, which I will insert in over the different programs to make it more interesting. In. Operation Bikini. We've already started. Well, it's spring. It's now it's spring. Let's <laughs> see if we're allowed to go to the beach again. I hope so. Well, Australians have only just uh, realised they can't, so we'll see what happens. Three more. Last one. No, two more. And changing sides. If you can sound, hear the sounds of little pitter patters in the background, that's Scarlett and Hans are being ever so good because they know that it's video time. Um, but they have, they are starting to get a little bit of cabin fever. Well, my old one is, and he's fine, but my young one is definitely struggling, not being able to go out on the street and go for her normal, her normal walks with Cat and with us. Okay, breath in, breath out, lift. In, down, breath out, lift. So I'm really, I'm working my abs, I'm working my pelvic floor, I'm pulling down on my back bit, this little chunky bit through here. It gets a little chunky as we get older. No, you're, that chunk's going, girl. My chunk, I'm working on my chunk. Five more. Three more. I'm not doing this. Elongating out through my corona. How many is that? Four times you've used it so far? Three, four times, yes. Okay, good. So you're going to bend your bottom leg. Um, how's my angle, Mandy? Good. Okay. So now we're going to do one of my favourite exercises, my internal leg rotations. Tuck your belly in. I tuck my belly in, like that. Okay, so what I want you to imagine is that your hips need to be aligned with each other. I want you to think that your leg bones are like wire. Okay, we're gonna create a bent shape with the wire, and then we're gonna rotate the wire downwards. Okay, and this hip bone is going to stay aligned with this hip bone. 
Now, the mussel, I want it to feel like fresh chicken that has not been cooked. We're gonna thread the chicken all the way over the wire and now the chicken is hanging on the wire. Without moving this hip bone, you drop your head down. Now this is optional. You could put, for those of you that have sore necks or just like the comfort of a pillow, this is where you can add that little pillow comfort in. Little people space here, breath out and lift. In and down. Now this is a glute med exercise. The non-moving of the hip bone is essential, otherwise you will not feel the glute med working. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. 10. Now, bring it forward without moving this hip bone. In fact, pull the pubic bone back, pull the hip flexor back, lift, lower and back. Forward, lift, lower and back. Now, it should be starting to hurt a little bit by now. This is also optional. My foot is very relaxed, no tension in my foot. Everything's kind of like dripping like fresh chicken. I know it's a gross analogy, but it kind of does the job. Five more. Optional, you can put leg weights on. I'm not opting for that at the moment. I might opt for that later on, but not, not, not today. <laughs> Three more. Sometimes it's good to put your hand on your hip to just keep that hip and that Three. distance between your hip and your Oh, ribs. Keep going. And now we're going to do 20 pumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Woo! Now, if you didn't get that reaction from your butt, you didn't do it correctly. <coughs> However, it's not that easy to do this exercise correctly. So um, if you go onto my YouTube channel, you will see there's a very specifically guided um, video, especially dedicated to this exercise. So you can go on and revise and look at that as well, which is when I'm in my studio doing it. Okay, my setup is important. Setup is really essential with the pelvis when you're doing any side work. If you're not in neutral spine, you won't feel um, the exercises correctly. So I'm creating my wire shape. So my bones are wired up. I've thread the fresh chicken over. My hip bones are level. I've got little people space here, hand in front. How's my setup look, Mandy? Great. Okay, breath out and lifting. Keep the hips stacked. In and out. Now I'm not letting this move, okay? This has to stay still. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm now going to bring it forward. I'm not going to let my hip flexor come forward. My hip flexor is going to crease back one. And back, little people space. And back. I'm almost sticking my bottom out a little bit to stop my pelvis from coming forward. Five more. Three more. Two more. Last one. And 20 pumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and resting. Hoo, 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 hoo. How's that up here? 
So I've chosen not to stretch your glutes yet. I'm going to stretch your glutes, but firstly we're going to do the clam because I just feel like I really want this exercise to give you a little bit of muscle soreness and I think that I'm also, this, um, this first class I've focused on your abs and your glutes and then my next session is going to be a huge focus on the upper body and inner thighs. Okay, so bum is sticking out, hip bones are stacked on top of each other, hamstring butt connection comes on, breath in, open, don't let this be hip bone move, breath out, close. In and out. In, out, in, out, in, out. Nine more. So the idea is basically, guys, that you feel like we're all together doing this together, which we are. And I promise you, I'll try and be as funny as I possibly can. I'm not feeling that funny today, to be honest. I woke up feeling a little bit like, ugh. You're doing a great job. And I think we need to be quite gentle on ourselves. I think we need to accept that um, we're not always going to wake up and feel great at this point time talk and work talk and work talk and work talk and work i was just giving my bottom a rest mandy <laughs> exactly the same air clam one and two three four five six seven eight nine as I was saying, I think we need to be gentle on ourselves. If we wake up not feeling great, I think that's quite normal. This is an exceptional situation that we're all in and uh, none of us really know how to deal with it that well because it's so strange. And it's such an odd thing to be locked in your house. Okay, so we set up again, bum sticks out. Breath in, open, out, close. My hamstring butt connection point is working. Two and three and four. Now, every time I'm breathing out, I'm talking and I'm blah, 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 and you guys need to be working your abs and your pelvic floor. Every breath out. I have no idea how many I've done. I'm going for 15. Five. No, I've done more than five. Thank you, Mandy. In the background there. <laughs> she wasn't even watching me, to be quite honest. She's just guessing. I knew that I knew that she would give me a number because she... Do another five. She, 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 she's controlling from afar. It's getting a bit dark, isn't it? Oh, three. Keep going. I'm just trying to distract you. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five more, five, four, three, two, one, and resting. And I'm still not going to let you stretch your glutes because we're going to go straight into the donkey. So, set up. Leg up, relax your neck, relax your neck, and elongate and squeeze your glutes. One, two, three, abs in, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five more, five, four, three, two, one. Change legs. One, two, squeeze my butt as much as I can. Four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten, five more, five, four, three, two, one, and resting. Oh, okay, as promised, a little stretch. Okay, so you're going to go like this. Everything might pop and plunk. You're going to drop onto your side and you're going to take this arm over. Not everyone has this flexibility like Natalia. Um, you have to, yeah, you'll have to gauge your you own, to find your own, your own flexibility. And sometimes if your hamstrings are really tight, you might need to bend that knee a little, little bit. Yeah, you may need to go like that. You may need pillows under your knees. If you've got knee problems, you may want to put some, some pillows under. Palm towards the floor. Palm is towards the floor. A co-pilot in the background. Okay. Now I'm going to twist. I'm going to hold onto my shin. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull with my fingers. See the flap on my pants. So pull with my fingers, which is going to give me this lovely stretch through my side here. I'm then going to take this leg over. I'm going to then cross this arm. I'm going to lift this arm up. I'm going to cross over my knee. I'm going to take my other hand back and I'm going to do a slow twist. And I'm going to bring this leg all the way around and we're going to come into a pigeon stretch, which I feel really good after all of that work that we just did there. So you can be, pigeon stretch can be like this or you can be relaxed all the way down into the ground. Today I'm going to come up and do it so I can keep talking to you. And people with knee problems? People with knee problems? Well, it depends on your knee problem. So if I think when it comes to the knees, if something doesn't feel comfortable, don't do it. Um, I'm a bit of a believer in knees can break. So I think that when you're doing anything in regards to your knees, it needs to feel comfortable and safe. If it doesn't feel comfortable and safe, don't do it. And I think that's a bit of a general rule with most most injuries and I, it's hard for me on doing general classes when I'm doing the general classes you need to kind of be more responsible for yourself with the injuries that you have and you know whether you can or you can't do it you also know in class if I would not give you an exercise like this normally then don't don't if you're do in it. doubt just send us a or if you're in doubt send me a message and I'll tell you whether you can or you can't okay changing sides We come over. We come, we hold on to the leg, we pull, we're stretching through to the side. Now I'm going to still do the spider challenge after this. I know. I don't think I've ever seen you do so much exercise. Since you were dancing, cross the leg over. How many years ago was that? How many years ago did I stop dancing? 15. 15 years ago. Yeah, and I'm still, still riding on the fact that I used to be able to do it. Do you do a little twist with this or are you going over? Little yeah. twist, twisting. See if some of my old dance colleagues get online with me and start doing my Pilates classes. So many spiders you guys can do still. Hmm? Okay, I'm going to spin that around. I'm going to go into a pigeon. Okay. I'm just going to sit here for a little while. really good after working the glutes. Mm, okay. 
We're now going to lay face down and we're going to do an on front hundred, which is a new one for you all. So like you would with the hundred, you're going to do five breaths in and five breaths out, but we're just going to do it in an on front position. Make sure your abs are on the whole time you're doing it. Also, you can squeeze your glutes a little bit, you can squeeze your inner thighs. You're going to lift up a little bit. You're going to turn your hands and we're going to start the hundred. Five in, five out. And rest. Sorry, what did you say, Mandy? Nice form. Oh, thank you. Oh, is it now? Does, does it feel very different doing it on your front? It feels a lot easier doing it on your front than it does doing the normal hundred. Um, what I do make it realise because my foot nearly went into a spasm when I was doing that. If you're not used to laying face down, you're going to get a cramp. Okay, so think about it when I lay you face down in the studio and I come and put little. Um, pillows under your ankles, that'll just, that'll just stop that, um, that, that your feet from cramping. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to do a plank. We're almost finished. We've got one more exercise to go. How much time have I got, Mandy? What's the time? How many? Uh, five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So we've got time for the plank. So we're going to do this, we're going to do three planks, six breath hold. When you get into the plank, your abs need to be absolutely on the whole time. You don't let them go. Glutes squeezing, reaching back through the heels, inner thighs on. Basically, everything's on. Upper body on. Serratus anterior is on. Let's go. Okay, elbows aligned with your shoulders. How's my form, Mandy? Beautiful. Push back to those heels. And squeezing and abdominals. Class, but I don't think I'm going to be able to because I have to do the spiner afterwards and they get very excited when they're being locked in the room and get to come back out again. They'll be jumping all over me like it's Christmas. And up and breathing out, squeezing. One up. Drop your thoracic slightly. What? Drop your thoracic slightly. That's better. Nice. Uh. <laughs> Come back into a child's pose and rest. You've finished your first workout. Preparing you for Mandy's bar classes. So the next class, guys, is going to be um, lots of upper body, inner thigh work, always abs. Never ever do you do a class without me, without me really working your abdominals, as you all know. And I hope you enjoyed that class and give me any feedback. See ya.